A Faraday bag is a great way to protect your small electronics from an EMP or electromagnetic pulse. And that is something that we prepare for here in the Prepper community. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what Faraday bag I'm using and what's inside of it. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper. And today we're talking about Faraday bags, what should go inside of them and which type am I using just to give you some ideas about how you can be better prepared. And if you're worried about things like an EMP or a CME happening at some point here in the future, then hit the subscribe button below because these are the items that are gonna protect the small electronics you might wanna rely on during an SHTF scenario. Now, I'm currently using the Crossbreed Arc Protector Series resistor bag, which I find to be a very affordable and good option for a Faraday bag. Now this is something that can easily protect your small electronics from EMPs, CMEs, or anything along those lines. And at the same time, the things that I put inside of it is really what's important. I'm trying to give you ideas about what you might want to protect. And I do expect all of you to give me as many ideas as you have as well down in the comments below. So let me go ahead and get into the bag itself and why I chose it as a Faraday bag option, and then kind of give you the rundown about what's inside and everything else as well. So quickly, I wanted to show you what you get in the box if you were to get a Crossbreed Arc Protector Series resistor bag. This is their Faraday bag, basically. And there's a lot of other options out there on the market, but this is what I'm choosing to store my small electronics in. And there's a couple reasons as to why, but first, I'll show you in the box, you get the bag itself, and then they also give you some oxygen and moisture absorbers as well. And one of the benefits to getting the ARC bag over something else is because it can be fully heat sealed to make anything inside of it impervious to moisture or whatever elements you don't want to expose your small electronics to. So I find that to be a big value. For the price, it's actually very inexpensive. And Crossbreed is a holster company, but all their products are made in the USA, which I find to be beneficial. And then this is also built to military specifications and it's made out of the same materials used to protect, you know, guided weapon systems and all kinds of stuff within the military currently. So for the price and what this brings to the table in the sense of capability, I find it hard to beat, although there are a lot of other options out there. So you might go with some other form of Faraday bag or whatever else you're gonna be using, but this is what we're using for this video. And I just wanted to go ahead and show you that and give you the idea that this is another option for you in case you're looking for your own Faraday bag scenario. Here's the arc resistor bag laid out on the table. So you can see that it's a pretty good size Faraday bag. But if you wanna test your Faraday bag out before you rely on it to protect your small electronics from an EMP or a CME or anything along those lines, one thing you can do at home very easily without having any specialty equipment is the walkie talkie test. So grab a handheld radio and tune it to a frequency that you know is generally gonna have a broadcast. Something like your NOAA emergency weather radio is a good option. And then once you have that on, put the radio inside of the bag and immediately it dies out, which means no signal can get through this bag, which is a great sign that it does offer some of the protection that it's advertising to offer. Pull the radio out, the signal comes back and everything's working the way it's supposed to. Back in the bag, immediately silenced. So that is a great sign and a very elementary test you can do on your own at home if you want to just check that your bag actually has some protection. Let's go over what's inside of my Faraday bag in order to give you some ideas about preparedness related items you might want to store in an EMP protective container. This is a big deal for being able to access some of these electronics post an SHTF scenario. And of course, there's a million different types of electronics that you might want to protect and not everybody's going to have the same needs. So this is just some of my ideas for what I protect and what I prioritize in the sense of making sure I have access to these things after an event. Now this bag is not fully sealed yet. In order to seal it, you would actually tape this seam to the rest of the bag using some kind of industrial grade masking tape or something similar to that. And that way it gets a full contact seal, which then allows it to discharge any kind of an EMP if it ever encounters it. So inside, the first thing I'm gonna have is comms. And comms to me are extremely important for SHTF survival or anything of that nature, because we wanna make sure we can hear what's going on, we can communicate with others, we can ask for help if need be. So in this comms case, which obviously was just a Motorola two-way radio case to begin with, I've got all sorts of comms and stuff in here. So now this is just to give you ideas of what you might need. I have regular, just commercial, handheld walkie-talkies, which are two-way radios, and then I also have Baofeng ham radios in here as well so that I can access different frequencies and you know listen in or broadcast to different entities if need be. I also have an emergency weather radio in here which 
Also acts as a power bank that can charge via solar or hand crank, and it can also be a flashlight, which is gonna be a redundant thing in this whole package because being able to light up the night is gonna be a big deal. And these two-way radios and these bow fangs also have flashlights, so everything is a freaking flashlight. But definitely good things to have, and all these comms, pieces of equipment that you have in a container like this need to have all of their charging bases or cords or cables as well. So all of those are in here too. Every type of USB I would need is included in this package as well as a charging base for the bow fangs, which also has a USB cable. That way I can connect it to either the power bank or additional power sources that I may or may not have. Also, a cell phone. This is an older Samsung cell phone that I don't use, and it's actually my wife's old phone, if you can't tell. But what I'm trying to say is that this is a computer in a tiny package. Have some kind of old smartphone or go pick one up at Walmart, like a burner phone that's cheap and has minutes you can put on it or whatever you want. But basically, this is a computer that has tons of different apps on it that's going to allow me to have information like survival guides, maps, topographical maps, it's gonna have ballistic data, all kinds of stuff that I could possibly wanna access during SHTF. You can also have photos on here, you can take photos, which could be good for intel gathering, and you can also use it for having things like your driver's license, your birth certificates, the proof that your kids are actually your kids, and everything else you might want on this phone can be stored on here easily. You can also obviously use it to contact people post SHTF. So I also have things here like an additional SIM card just in case I need to try to replace the SIM card in this phone to a new one or just trying to see if maybe there's a different way to get comms when the phone's not working properly or who knows what. So redundancy is huge. And like I said, there's tons of apps on here that you can use for survival, right? So there's tons of different survival apps and just things that might be handy during, you know, like Disney Plus for some reason is on here. I have no idea why. But if you have kids and stuff like that and you wanna be able to access movies, it's still a good thing to upload onto this phone. Basically, I treat this thing like a giant USB drive with its own screen that also has the ability to be a communication device if need be. So an old smartphone is really a really smart thing to have inside one of these bags, let's be honest, okay? so. Hopefully that gave you some ideas here with comms, and I find all of comms to be very important for SHTF survival purposes. So after that, what else I have in here is going to be, I have a pouch, it's just an electronics pouch basically. It's an extra pouch I had laying around, but keeping things organized and cable management is gonna be a big deal for making sure you get as much space usage out of these bags as possible. So keep that in mind when you're packing everything up, but basically in here is a bunch of extra cables, a wall charger in case I need it, um, battery chargers, right? So I can have additional batteries, rechargeable batteries for things like, I don't know, CR123As that you may or may not need in a certain type of flashlight. Um, another battery charger, redundancy is key, but at the same time, different size batteries might work in one and not the other. And then, um, like I said, more rechargeable batteries. And then flashlights. So this actually has a couple flashlights in it as well. And just having some decent flashlights that are gonna do the job. Um, this one has a lighter built in, which is always a good option. This one is just really bright and has the beveled end, which can be you know used for self-defense purposes and everything else, but at the end of the day, Having flashlights is gonna be a big deal. You need to light up the night, you need to know what's coming your way, you need to be able to see where you're going, avoid injury, a million other things. So I can charge the batteries, I can charge these flashlights, I can do everything I need to do, and I just have flashlights in here because some of them do have complicated circuitry which might be affected by an EMP. We don't know if it will be or not, why risk it? Have some redundancy ready to go in case you need it. And then another thing that I have in this pouch is actually going to be a watch. Now this watch is solar powered, so I don't have to worry about charging it or anything like that, but I do want at least some kind of timepiece that'll tell me the time, maybe the date, maybe the year, everything else post SHTF. And if every watch is destroyed during an EMP, at least you'll have one that might actually work. And this one is actually a little bit damaged, but you know, it's something I'm working on getting fixed. So either way, this is the pouch for flashlights, batteries, and battery chargers. And then I have the watch in there too because it's like its own little charger. It's solar, it's good to go, right? Now, get this stuff out of the way. I'm pretty sure that you can understand why those things are important. I don't think I need to explain all of this thoroughly, but what I can say is that you can see kind of a factor of redundancy here when it comes to having all the cables and all the batteries and all the things you might need to power the things that you're storing within the bag, all right? so. Also, 
one of my old night vision cameras, right? So this one, you might have seen a video on this one a long time ago, got a really good deal on it, but this is a night vision capable camera. And what's nice about it is that it can take video, it can take photos, and it can let you see in the dark. So being able to use night vision post SHDF can be a big difference in the sense of a force multiplier. However, you know, I don't have nods. I'm not some rich guy that can just afford, you know, a huge, crazy night vision setup. Now, if I had one, I might consider storing it in a Faraday bag because I don't want my $4,000 nod setup to go down the drain the second an EMP goes off. But this gives me some night vision capability, gives me some recon capability in the sense of being able to take photos and videos. And obviously it's a complicated electronic device, so it will be affected by an EMP most likely if anything else is. And it's something I think could be very useful post SHTF. So some kind of night vision or thermal or whatever else you might have would be a good idea to protect using one of these bags, okay? And then of course, something you definitely want is some kind of a power unit, okay? So this is an EcoFlow River Mini Wireless. This one can charge your wireless uh, charging capable devices right on top of it, like a cell phone or something. And then this also has all of the outlets you would want in the sense of having your standard outlets right here, as well as USB outlets right here on the front. So this can charge just about everything you'd want to charge with it. And this can be charged by a wall outlet, a vehicle, or a solar panel. And then you, in order to do that, you want to make sure you have all the cables you're gonna to need too. So I have these stashed in there as well. So like I said, cables are important. Cable management's important because you know, if you're OCD like I am, you gotta have them tied up in some form or another, but you wanna be able to actually use these devices post SHTF. And if you don't have the right cables for everything, you might have dead batteries within a day or two that you can't recharge because you forgot to pack the cables away. So keep that stuff in mind. But at the end of the day, having a power unit of some kind is huge. And this being protected from an EMP allows me to basically have all of my my small electronics within my home accessible if they still work. So if anything still works, I can use this to power it. And if nothing still works except for what was in this bag, I can use this to charge those walkie talkies, the radios, the phone, the flashlights, everything you saw in this bag for days. This thing will take care of all that stuff for a very long time. So. Be aware that having some kind of power source within this bag is huge. And one good thing about the wireless model is just that it's one more way I can charge things. So for example, if your cell phone gets corrupted and is no longer able to be able to use its USB port, then possibly the wireless charging will still work and vice versa. And that's why you wanna have more than one way to utilize some of these chargers. So yeah, you have the wall unit just in case, but you also have the USB unit as well. Now. That's what's in the bag. So let me get everything packed back in and then we'll seal the bag up so you can see the final product and have an understanding of why a Faraday bag, especially one that's as cheap as this. And look, I am not affiliated with Crossbreed holsters. I'm not affiliated with this ARC bag by any means. There's nothing in this for me. I just think this is a cool product by a company that makes all their stuff in America that's trying to put something out there when they generally just make holsters. So I can appreciate the fact that they like the idea of preparedness as well. So just wanted to get that out of the way because I'm sure you're, you're wondering, but I do want to mention that, you know, this is just a very good deal for what it brings to the table and it seems to work. So we'll get it packed up, we'll seal it up and then uh, we'll just take it from there. All right, so everything's back in the Faraday bag. We got the comms kit, we've got the pouch that has the extra cables, the battery chargers, and the flashlights. I've got the power bank back here. We've got the night vision camera, and we also have the additional cable. So at this point in time, this thing is getting pretty full, and I still need to be able to seal the bag up so that it'll work effectively against an EMP, and I can't really stuff anything else in here. But there's a million items you could put in a Faraday bag, like an iPad, a laptop, a Geiger counter, tons of different stuff that could be relevant to preparedness. So if you have other ideas about what should go in a Faraday bag, leave it in the comments below. But one thing I will say is that you can always get more than one and you can have tons and tons of electronics protected if need be. But this is just what I'm going for in the sense of a good start and to give people ideas about what would be very important in the sense of being able to supply yourself with more power, comms and everything else related to small electronics for preparedness. So we can seal this up now. You can heat seal it, like I said before, and make it impervious to water and everything else, but then you can't access it very easily or anything like that. It would be fine because this power station from EcoFlow would last a year on the shelf without any interaction and all the other small electronics in here would be pretty stable as well. However, for my purposes, all I need to do is tape it. I'm not planning on storing this at a bug out location or burying it or anything crazy like that. So I'm not completely concerned about having to make sure it's impervious to the elements, but I also might want to be able to get into this bag without it being an emergency. So with tape, I can easily do that. And 
Crossbreed actually suggests using industrial tape like this masking tape here. Um, I'll link their video up here so you can see it in case you want to see their different um, form and function for how they heat seal as well as how they seal with the tape. But at the end of the day, you just want to get this three inch lip that they give you on the bag back onto itself and then seal it down tight so that it has the ability to discharge any kind of an electromagnetic pulse if it ever encounters one. So I'll go ahead and get this thing taped up. And then basically at the end of the day, I'll have a lot of small electronics with their own power source that can easily get me through some hard times during an SHTF scenario. And that's exactly the purpose of these bags. That's the purpose of any Faraday item that's out there. You're just trying to make sure that these small electronics that could easily help you be better prepared for a survival situation are accessible, are actually able to be worked, and are ready for you when you need them the most. So that's why you should get a Faraday bag. And you don't have to get the Crossbreed Holsters Art Survival Bag or Resistor Bag. You have to get something that'll do the job for you and you wanna make sure that it's something you're comfortable with. You can build your own Faraday cage, you can build your own bags, you can do a lot of things, but this makes it very easy, less time consuming, and it's very inexpensive. I believe this bag was about $20. So you really can't go wrong. And just so everybody knows, I'm not affiliated with Crossbreed Holsters. I'm not affiliated with this Arc Resistor bag or anything like that. All I know is that it's a good product that's made in the USA by a company that makes good holsters. And I thought it was cool that they were willing to try to put some more products out there related specifically to preparedness. And I find that to be a benefit. So I just like the product and I want you guys to be aware that there's no affiliation here. This is just something I'm showing you because I think it's a good idea and I think everybody should protect their small electronics before an EMP goes off or anything along those lines. Now, I've got this taped up. It doesn't have to be fancy, it can be very crude like any other handy job I try to do on my own. But at the end of the day, this is sealed up now, it's good to go, and it's easy to do for anybody. You don't have to be handy, you don't have to be smart or anything like that. Because trust me, sometimes I don't qualify for either one of those. Now, we have what we have in here. Like I said before, Leave the comments below if you want to give me some other ideas about what should be in a bag like this. This is going to store away and everything inside is going to be protected now and I can feel good about it. If you have anything else at all for me ever, magicprepper.com is a good place to go. And besides that, that's going to be it for Magic Prepper. Yeah.